Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to another episode in the Java series. This time I'm going to teach you about Java 15 text blocks. Alright guys, before I start this episode though, I want to preface this by saying I have a written article, I've written about this, uh, that supplements this video that you can find in the description below, as well as the full source code for this episode. So check it out. Alright, let's jump right into it. Text blocks. This is a JDK 15 feature. It was available in Java 14 and Java 13, but those were preview features of text blocks, but now it's official in Java 15. Um, at the time of recording, Java 17 is out, but it's still relevant and a lot of people don't know about it. So I'm gonna teach you guys and hopefully you can share this with others. Um, okay, so currently, um, if you wanna make something like a paragraph, or just any string with multiple lines. Uh, there's a few ways you can do it, but generally speaking, you would have, you know, I am a line. And then if you, if you wanna have more lines, you could just add a new line escape sequence there. So I am a new line, I am a line. And then another, if you want another line, you can uh, do a new line again. So I am a line. And that's one way you could have multiple lines in a string. So if you wanna print this out, let's see what that looks like. And there we go, so we get multiple lines, pretty simple, but Obviously, as the paragraph or, you know, string gets more complex that has multiple lines in it, um, it's going to be harder to represent it and it looks worse and worse. But another thing we can do is just separate it so we can just concatenate multiple strings into one string variable. So instead of doing that, we can do uh, this and then plus this and we can have it like that. And then same thing here. And boom. The difference with this is that, of course, they make more sense logically. Now the lines are on different lines, technically, or, and they're also separated by a plus, so concatenation with strings. So it's a little more readable in this case, especially as you know they get more complex. But you still need the new line character here, so doing slash n, that's a new line. And that's very annoying, but with Java 15 text blocks, you can do this. So I'm going to reassign the paragraph variable, so paragraph is equal to and then you're going to, instead of using one double quotes, you're going to use three. That's how you denote a uh, text block. So one, two, three. And now it opens it up for you, IntelliJ does. And then here, you don't write your, your string starting on this line. The first line has to be empty, like the line after the opening uh, text block uh, quotes. So this has to be empty or it won't work. And the next line is where you start putting the text. So let's start here. So I am a line. And now if I want to add multiple lines, I can just do enter. I am a line, enter, I am a line. So already this looks pretty strange, first of all, but also it looks much more, it makes sense, right? Logically, this you know makes a lot of sense. You don't need the new line character. It looks how you would want to represent it if you print it out right now. So let's print it out and we should get it exactly how it looks. There we go. So we get, first of all, you know, it's starting here, but the cool thing about text box, the magical thing about text box is essentially you're representing it in the code how you would want to actually see it when outputted. So it logically makes more sense. It's also more pleasing to work with because you don't need to have the new line character. It already knows how to handle multiple lines of text for text blocks. And you may say, okay, that's not, I mean, that's pretty cool, Cody, but that's not really, you know, a game changer. But let me show you where the, where the, the real game changers are. So normally, if you would want a JSON text, you would have to do something like this. Let me just go ahead and copy it because it's so hard to type. This is a JSON string, and this is how you would represent JSON within Java. Very, very annoying to use because you have to escape uh, each of the quotes. And as you know, quotes are very common within JSON text, so you're going to have to be escaping a lot. So obviously this is very, very, very annoying, especially as the JSON objects get larger and larger. Or what if you want to represent like a whole multiple objects within one JSON? That's like extremely hard to represent. And also it's just not very readable. Like look at this thing. You can understand it's very simple because it's a small object, a JSON object, but it's going to get hard to read and it's very much a pain. So what we can do is now use text box to represent our JSON. So we can do reassignment here. So JSON, open a new text block. And then here we can do opening JSON uh, curly bracket. And then there we can do tab to format it. And then we can have the name key. So name Cody. And then I think you would have a comma right there. And then age, age. And uh, you can choose to represent age with quotes or not. If it's, you know, JSON supports integers, right? Or numbers. So we can just do one, two, three. But for this, it uses quotes, so we're just going to put quotes for 24. There we go. So this is the exact same thing. 
they're literally this looks so much better than this up here and they represent the exact same thing within uh, internally so if we just print them out both we should get the same thing twice and there we go we do get the same thing twice except this one well first of all this one's more compact it doesn't span multiple lines which is fine but this one does and we can also have it you know all on one line if we really wanted to but there's no point in doing that if you don't have to. It looks way better this way. It's formatted in a much more readable way. And that's the whole, that's the really the biggest point about text blocks is everything is much more readable. Let me give you one more example. This is also a very cool example. So let's say that you want to represent HTML code or XML text within a string. You can do that. Sometimes you'll be doing that if you're making like an HTTP client or maybe you are working with one, maybe you're working with servlets, a Java web application, and you want to send HTML text back to the browser if someone makes a request to your server. So you might have a variable called string HTML is equal to, and then you, inside of that you have the HTML text that you want to send to the browser in the response. So I can just copy this, because again, it's very, very hard to type. And there we go, that's how you might represent it. Again, there's different ways, you don't have to concatenate everything, you could have it all together, but that'd be hugely painful. So this is one way to represent it. And then if you use text box, we can do HTML. And I'm just going to copy it again. And boom. So there we go. Same thing, except this time we don't need to escape it. And you don't need to concatenate the strings. And they're all just one string, except that it's formatted automatically. So the indentation is present on each of these. And uh, looks great. So if you were to print this out, the indentation is still there. There we go. So um, the Java language with text blocks is able to recognize what indentation is important. So even though you have a bunch of indentation in front of this, it's automatically recognizing which indentation to remove. So it knows to remove this one, but it knows that this one is important because, um, so the way it works really is that uh, the text block, whenever you're running the code and all that, it knows where to indent it or start the indentation based upon the first, uh, like the most, outward line. So in this case, this line is the furthest to the left. So it knows that the indentation has to start at this point. And then everything after that point is going to be indented. So these points here, or these uh, white, this white space here, is all going to be remain, uh, remaining when you try printing out the string, or try processing it, or formatting it, or whatever you want to do with the string, not just print it out. And the cool thing about IntelliJ is that it actually puts the line here for you so that you can see where the indentation starts. Okay, and if you want to edit that, you can. This is what the bottom one is for. So the bottom one actually serves two purposes. Uh, by default, it's going to try and make it so that, you know, you have this after the last line. But uh, um, if you print this out, you'll notice that there's actually a new line after the final line. So if you want to remove that new line, all you have to do is put this, this closing text block, uh, triple quotes, on the last line. So now when you print out, print out the string here, it won't have a, a, uh, a new line character on the end. So there we go. So now there's only like the space provided automatically. So now it's gone. So that's up to you. And of course the indentation is still going to remain the same because it automatically knows where to start it. But if you do want to change the indentation, you can do that using this uh, closing quotes here. So you can just put this on the last line and then you can change it so that let's say that you want the indentation to start somewhere over here. All you have to do is move it. And now the line moves until it just shows you where it starts. And now, if we want to print out print out the HTML string, that's where, where the indentation will start. There we go. So all of the, everything's moved forward now because all of this white space is now no longer ignored when you try printing out the string. So if you're to do anything with the string besides print it out, you have to be aware of where the indentation starts, if that even matters. Usually it's not going to matter pretty much, but um, yeah, okay. So that's how you can edit the indentation. That's also how you can make it so that there's a new line on the end or not, just by making it here or here. Okay, so pretty awesome. I hope you like this tutorial so far. It's a very, very powerful feature, just because it, you know why. So anyway, just continuing a little more stuff before we end this episode. So another topic that we should cover is escaping characters. So normally we escape characters if we want to do something like a new line, or if we want to use a, uh, for example, if you have a string, let me just get rid of all this. If you have a string, and you want to say line is equal to my name is, and you want to have quotes around Cody, you have to escape the quotes. So Cody, escape, there we go. And the reason you have to escape it is of course, because 
Java will not be able to differentiate, 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 I think that's the word, uh, between the quotes of the string itself and the quotes if you use them without the escape sequence. So you have to escape quotes whenever you use them with any string. But in the, in the case of text blocks, you don't have to because text blocks are not open by single double quotes, they're open by triple double quotes. So text block is equal to triple quote, open that up, and you can say my name is Cody. So we can literally use quotes within our text blocks as you would want to represent them. So you're looking at it the way it would be represented within the code itself or printed out. And if you find yourself having to use triple quotes in your string for some reason, or your text block, excuse me, uh, for some godforsaken reason, I don't know why you would ever use triple quotes, you do have to escape that. So just put a slash in front to escape it. Boom, now you can use triple quotes. And let's print it out just to see what it looks like. There we go, so it says, my name is Cody, surrounded by triple quotes, because we escaped it, there we go. Another common uh, escape sequence that you may use within text blocks is for spacing. So if you have multiple lines within text blocks, so this is one line, this is another, this is another, another. Any space that comes after the last line will be ignored by the text block. So this will automatically be trimmed by the text block. So if you want to have that space here, you have to explicitly put slash s after it. And then now all of this will be present within the string itself. Otherwise, it's ignored. So if we want to have um, some more here, you can have as much as you want, put that, okay? So if we print this out, you really won't be able to see the difference um, unless you highlight it, so let me show you. So it says this is another, and then we can highlight the space, there we go. So you know the space is there just because you can select it. On this last line, we cannot select anything because there's no space after, right? On the middle line, we can also select it because there is space. So if you do want to use space, then you can use that escape sequence there. So you may know about uh, system.out.printf. Normally we would, we would use print line. So let me just go ahead and do s out. And you can use triple quotes in here to denote a text block. Because a text block, you know, equivalates to a normal string, you can use a text block wherever you can use a normal string. So any method that accepts a string also works with text blocks, um, anything, okay? So we can say this is a text block and it works perfectly, boom. So you can use it directly in the method if you want to. And uh, if you want to add formatting, so let's say that, and we can use printf, so system.out.printf, and we can say this is a word, we can do percent sign s, then at the end here, we can put the word that we want to put, uh, put there. So we'll do string word is equal to Bob. And now word is going to be automatically replaced into the string before it's printed out. That's what printf does if you're not familiar already. There we go. So, so this is a word Bob instead of percent sign s. So there you go. So that's relevant if you know already about printf. Another way you can do this is by using the new Java 15 formatted method. So JDK 15 formatted method on strings. So we can do the same thing as we're doing up here, down here, let me show you. So instead of printf, we can just do a regular s out and we can say, open that up. This is a word, dollar sign s. And then if you were to print that out, you would just get dollar sign s, there's nothing to replace it with, okay? And then now because this equivalates to a string, this literally is a string, even though it's a string literal or a text block literal, it still is a string behind the scenes so you can run methods on it so we can do formatted. And within formatted, you put the things that you want to replace within here. So formatted, and we can just pass in word. And this formatted method will return the new string with everything replaced. So control Q. It says formats using the string as the format string and this applied arguments. So it says returns a formatted string, which we're going to print out to the console. So we should get, this is a word bob. There we go, perfect. So you're getting a little warning just because this is kind of redundant. It recommends that you use this one because there's really no point. There we go. But you may find yourself in a situation, of course, where you do want to use formatted. This is just an example where I'm printing it out so you can see what it looks like. All right, guys, this is pretty much it for this episode. I showed you how to use text blocks in many different ways. I first showed you the examples of where text blocks are actually useful in everyday coding. And then I showed you some of the you know intricacies of text blocks by showing you how to change the indentation start point, how to choose whether you want to add a new line onto the end of your text block, 
how to escape stuff using escape sequences within text blocks and what you don't have to escape anymore. So spacing, um, you don't have to escape quotes anymore unless it's a triple quote. Um, and you can still use the regular escape sequences that you would use in everyday coding with strings. It's up to you if you need them. And then one final thing is formatting. So you can see that here. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Hopefully it was informative. If you have anything to add about Textbox, then leave a comment in the comment section below. And also don't forget to please check out my written article. I'm going to start um, writing articles about tutorials when I do them. So you can check out my blog. I have an article about Textbox up already. So check it out. Description below. All right, so that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. In the description below, I'll leave a link to the code for this episode so you can check it out. You can bookmark it, come back to it later. If you forget any concepts or you just want to review the concepts I taught in this video, I'll mark everything up with comments so you can come back and read the code without having to rewatch the video, although your reviews are greatly appreciated. So yeah, I'll leave a link for that in the description below, so make sure to check it out. And another thing is I'll leave a link to our Discord server. It's a big community for programmers. You can ask for help on your programming projects if you're stuck on something, or maybe you can get some new friends. If you don't have any friends, there's lots of people here. It's growing really fast. You can, get, uh, you can find lots of people who are passionate about the same things as you. For example, if you like Minecraft uh, Spigot development, uh, you can find people, lots of people who like that. If you like C++, if you like Java, if you like web development, it's a really, really big programming community. So uh, feel free to join. There's a link for that in the description below. And the last thing I want to tell you is that if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month and you can cancel at any time. You get some cool perks like early access to all of my new videos, a cool rank on my Discord server like you see right here on the side, YouTube members, and also you get to see yourself on the screen like you see right now. So if that sounds cool to you, feel free to join. If you don't want to, that's fine. If you can't, that's okay too. Um, I really just uh, appreciate you watching the video anyway. And uh, thank you. Thanks a lot. And that's it. So if you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. And peace.